Hi folks, and you probably wonder, where is he up to now? Well, I'll tell you in a few seconds. First of all, a warm welcome to the channel. And those of you that have been watching my channel, you know that we have renovated the tower room. But now it's time for the other rooms. So more specifically, the entranceway into the tower room which is the staircase, which is a huge wall we need to clean up and restore. We also need to put a bathroom in, we need to fix the ceiling, we put some insulation in that hallway. So a lot of work is to come. But before I can do any of that, I need to shuffle a lot of debris and install a scaffold. So that's going to be a little bit of work. Now this area looks already fairly clean, but if you go higher up, you'll see there is some chalk on it. Maybe it might even be some paint on it from the old days and all that stuff has to get off. And that we're going to shop blast. The staircase is going to be another major challenge. And as you can see, we still got all the parts of that original staircase. The steps are gone, you know, that's it. It's totally gone. However, I still have the side support beams both for the outer side and the inner side. So we're going to rebuild these steps. And of course, this is not gonna be all in one video. So here is the platform I was talking about and all these beams will have to be cleaned up, shot blasted, together with the floor here. I already have a new oak floor installed on this. And then the last part is the staircase which is going finally uh, to the first floor and then we still have to build a new staircase to get into the tower room this right here is the first floor and this is the wall that i just showed you downstairs and you can see we got chalk on it there is some damage on it so we're gonna shot blast it first and then we'll repair all these cracks and these holes so that's going to be a little bit of work Right there, you have the entrance to the tower room. So we still have to make a staircase here. And then on my left, uh, that's going to be the bathroom uh, or the upstairs bathroom. But as you can see, there's still a lot of debris around, especially all the way up there, uh, which we have to sort out. This is the area where the bathroom will come. And uh, you might notice that I'm standing a little bit deeper than the floor over here, because this is the real floor level. The reason for that is that I want to have a sunk-in bathtub. So the bathtub will sit in the floor. So not on the floor, but in the floor. So that's why I have this lower level here. And this has already been sorted out before. I built this before with these uh, Eton blocks. These are insulation blocks at the same time. Now you can also see that the roof has been redone. So these rafters are now ready to be insulated in between them. And then we have to put drywall up. Still a lot of work to be done here, but we'll get there. And on the floor here, I have all the other parts for the um, baluster of the staircase. And let me show you that. And here it is. I mean, these are real huge pieces of wood in oak, which we have recuperated. And you can see this big one here, but I also got these smaller pillars that go on the side. And then we got actually a heavy rail. This is the rail for it. Um, so all this is ready to be installed or cleaned up once we get to it. Um, I did have to turn one additional pillar like this uh, on the late. So what you see here will be the ceiling for the bathroom. Now, of course, you can see that this old ceiling is very rotten, especially the planks, uh, but that's all sorted out. The water leak is, is long time sorted. But I'm going to remove all these old planks and that's going to be a lot of debris and, and that's going to be the first thing we need to do. But I will retain all these beams here because those beams are intact and I like to keep the originality. And then all these old planks will be replaced. As you can see, this is going to be a major job. But to be honest, I love it. I love work. If I don't have work, man, I get stressed and frustrated. So. And you will see a lot of videos coming up on rebuilding this whole area. It won't be just one video, but a multitude of them. And at the same time, you will still see videos coming in on the cars and Old Rusty. But for now, I need to install the scaffold and get all the debris out of that area. Now, some people have asked me the question, if I never get tired of this, because after all, I'm 62, but you know what? 
This stuff keeps me young and keeps me going. So no, I don't get tired of it. I enjoy it. I mean, think about it. I mean, I'm restoring something which is 400, 500 years old. So isn't that neat? That's interesting, almost looks like a pencil, doesn't it? Most of the debris is off the platform. I still have some dust, but now I'm going to remove the planks and they are wasted anyway, so I'm going to cut them and then uh, trying to get them off the support beams. And for that, I'm going to use my chainsaw. So this is the last plank that goes off. And now that's done. So now we've got the frame structure and I'm gonna leave that for now. Um, we still got some nails in it. I'm gonna grind those off. But eventually we're gonna blast all this and then we're going to enforce it because we have to have a wall here. And then uh, we're gonna put new planks on the top of it in oak. And that should be it. Now, there's a way you can tell how old these uh, planks are, more or less based on the nails that are being used. So if you look on this nail, you can see that actually it's a square nail with a square head. And this is typical for nails that were used before the 19th century. that they used on the platform is what we call ulm. It's a very old type of wood and you can't find this anymore. Uh, but this one is so badly deteriorated, deteriorated and eaten up by worms. And as, as you can see, look at that, how bad that is. So normally I would keep that wood because it's hard to find. And in fact, you can't get new wood in ulm. So that is why um, um, I keep those sometimes, but in this case, I'm going to toss it away because it is useless. So that is at least one piece that is cleaned up, but now I still have another one all the way there on the top. There's a bunch of old planks and I don't know what else is there, but I need to get that removed before I can actually blast the wall. I need to install a scaffold anyway uh, for blasting the wall. So that's the first thing I'm going to do now is installing that scaffold. And then we have easy access and safe access to that area. There's all kinds of scaffolds on the market today, but these ones are very handy scaffolds because they are very modular, very strong as well. And they have what we call rosettes on them, so you can hook up all the different supports on different levels. So I always uh, enjoyed this kind of a uh, scaffold system. Um, they're not that cheap, but uh, they are really good. And, uh, I just added a few elements today because I don't have enough of them on my other system. So I'm going to try to install these now. And then um, after that, um, yeah, we'll um, start removing the junk. And then hopefully we can start blasting the wall. So here we are, 
So now I can reach the top part. So the scaffold is now set and now I can remove all that debris that we have out here. And that is a whole bunch of stuff. I only think I need to secure the scaffold to the wall and then we are all set. So with all the debris removed, we can now finally start blasting the walls. But for that, we will need to prepare a few things. Shot blasting the walls takes, of course, a compressor and you should be able to get about 7 bar or about 120 psi in a steady flow over a fairly big hose. So that's the first thing you need to do. So either you go and rent one and if you have your own, well, use your own. I'm using my own because I'm also using it to uh, prepare cars. But a compressor alone is not enough. I've got to preheat it a little bit because it's a diesel. The other thing you're going to need is an air dryer and this is an air dryer for medium capacity. Again, you can rent those or you can buy those, but you have to have one because otherwise you're going to get condensation inside the hoses. And that is not something you want to have because it's going to clog up your media, it's going to clog up your blasting gun. So get one, let it turn for about half an hour before you start so it's really cooling properly. So let me turn that on and then we look on the other thing you need to have, which is actually the blasting gun. So this is my blasting gun, which is connected with a fairly long hose to this container. In this case, it's a small Ibex. It's one of the smaller models, but I don't use this all that often. So, and the jobs I have are not all that big. So this is more than good enough for me. So you put the media inside on the top through this funnel here pour it in, and as I said before, I'm using Garnet 360, which is a very fine kind of grid. Uh, it's natural stone. You can't use sand anymore. Some people call it sandblasting. You can't use this anywhere where I live because it's uh, dangerous. You get a disease from it called silicosis, I believe. So we cannot even buy it anymore. So I have to use Garnet. And I'm using Garnet 360, which is very fine because the bricks are fairly soft and I don't want to take too much off the bricks. So once you've got your garnet inside, then you can adjust the pressure here and on the side you connect your hose, which is going to your helmet because you really want to be um, secure with your helmet because there's a lot of dust flying around. You don't want to breathe all that stuff. So I have a helmet, a cask that fits completely and then it has pressure inside with fresh air coming from here through a bunch of filters. And that is really the best way to work. So this is the protective helmet and in the back you will hook up the uh, hose which is coming from the compressor, basically the clean air. So you have a little bit of an overpressure in it and then um, you're quite safe because the cap really will protect you uh, really well. And it's in fact even the visor is double layered so you have like two layers of it so if anything jumps off the wall it bounces off the first one if it cracks the first uh, screen you still have a second screen and you can peel those off and replace them so this is really good stuff and really if you're going to do this kind of work you should really wear this kind of protection now this is going to be a very dusty job so outside i have a blower which is going to suck through this flex hose most of the dust out of that area where I'm actually shot blasting. I'm going to try to avoid uh, getting this dust all over the place because this is very fine dust and after years you still find it sometimes. So let me turn it on and then we're going to start and we're going to do a trial on a little piece of wall to see uh, how much pressure I'm going to need and how much media I'm going to need. <laughs> Right, hopefully you can hear me all right because I can't test it. So I'm going to give it a try on the wall. I have set the pressure to about five kilograms and a little bit of uh, media. So let's see. And you can see I can gently get this off. I'm not really um, damaging the wall, the bricks, because I don't want to do that. 
So this is going to take a little bit of time. Now, I know you can go a lot faster with more media and be more aggressive, but I don't really want to do that. These bricks are so soft, so I want to preserve them as much as I can. And you can see the dust that you're flying around. Now, it doesn't have to be 100% clean either. That is more than good enough for me. So I'm going to turn off the camera right now because otherwise it's going to get too dirty and messy on my camera. So the walls are now cleaned up and this was really, really a dirty job, but they turned out to be quite all right. Um, I do have some places where there's some repair to be done. Well, we got a couple of holes in the wall here and there that we need to repair. We also have a, a few cracks here and there. These are very, very old cracks. You can actually tell they filled it up before with plaster, but by blowing out the plaster, uh, they actually became visible again. So they just had a small coat of plaster over it that covered it up. During World War I, the tower was hit by quite a couple of mortars and you still see the impacts on the wall. Here I have an impact, I don't know if you can see it, but it actually came through the roof and you can see that beam out there. You know, it's like a missing part which has been blown away and they put another one on top of it. Well, that part has been damaged at the time the mortar got its impact right here in the wall. And I have a couple of places like this where I have that issue. So these are the things we will have to clean up and fix. Uh, also, I will have to fix that beam there, but that's not for this video. Next for me now is to restore the wall in the sense that I'll need to fix these cracks here and there and fill up those holes with brick. And luckily I have a whole bunch of spare bricks that I recovered some time ago. We also have to fix here the step we have to put tiles up because this is the entrance to the tower room. And as you can see, we're missing some bricks. But this is all minor work. That's not really a lot of work, probably about a day. And once all this is done, the wall will stay actually naked as it is. But I will put a varnish up to the wall so that it doesn't powder anymore. And these varnishes you can buy, those are special stone varnishes. You can buy them either glossy or matte. And I'm going to go for a matte effect because that's what I like. So folks, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.